In the name of Allah, the most merciful and kind, you are about to listen to an audio representation of the life of the Prophet Muhammad. It does not replace a thorough studying of his life. Now, sit back and enjoy the show. Chapter 7 The Lost Boy Zayd ibn Haritha was only 12 years old when he was kidnapped. Found them! Ah! Zayd, no! Please, ah! not my son! Take the boy and tie him up. No! Mother! No! <laughs> come on, come on. Take me instead. Shut ah! up, woman. Mother, help! That's it. Cover his mouth. Hold still. <laughs> you cannot do this! His father is Harita! He's from the Banyukar! He's a free boy! <laughs> <laughs> and we're from the Benukain. You think we care about your lousy tribe? Load it up, men! They came in the night, took all her belongings, her food, animal, and supplies. But the most precious thing they took was her boy. Zaid! <laughs> Suq al uqqad was the slave market of Mecca. Human commodity was exchanged daily. Dark-skinned Abyssinians, prisoners of war, concubines, and children. <laughs> Hey you, why are you crying? I'm not a slave, I shouldn't be here. My name is Zaid Ibn Harika, I'm free. Well, you're in chains now. I've been a slave for a while now. I hope my new master only whips me. You want your master to whip you? Zaid, my advice to you, you would much rather get whipped than starved. A merchant approached the two of them and they fell silent. How much for the dark-skinned one? Five hundred did him. Hmm, he's not that healthy. Make it three hundred. I want to turn a quick coin, sir. So, three hundred? Four hundred, and we settle. <laughs> Come, boy. As Zaid was led away by his new buyer, he looked back at the other boy in chains, who gave a sad smile of farewell. Zaid was shaking as his new buyer led him through the city. What if his master asked him to lift heavy loads? He was thin and weak. What if he could not do his tasks? Would his master beat him? Starve him? His mother and father were hundreds of miles away. They had no idea he was in Mecca of all places. He was alone. Zayd stared in horror as a procession of naked pilgrims circled around the Kaaba. This was a strange place. They approached a large house with a storefront under a green pavilion of silk. Zayd's heart dropped. His master was wealthy. That was a bad sign. He probably had dozens of servants. He was probably cruel and unjust. Zaid would be nothing more than merchandise to him. Lady Khadija. Hakim, welcome, my nephew. Are you all right? Very. I have purchased a slave for you. Hmm, I see that. I... I wanted you to hire someone, Hakim. No need, my lady. He was very cheap. I know you do not like slaves, but this one is cheaper than a paid servant. He's young, he has all his teeth. He'll do just fine for your business. Zaid was taken aback by the woman in the doorway. She was kind, soft-spoken, and pretty. He wasn't expecting a woman to begin with. When Hakim left, Lady Khadija looked down on Zaid almost motherly. She gave a little smile. Are you hungry? Zaid hadn't seen so much food in weeks. He ate ravenously as Lady Khadija watched him almost longingly. He noticed the way she was looking at him. Do you have any children? I do. But they're all grown now. They help me run my business, but by the will of Allah it's growing faster than I anticipated. You have your own business? I do. What about your husband? My husband passed away. It's just me now. Zaid felt he had asked too much and fell silent, mm. swallowing the date he had been chewing. Are you an orphan, Zaid? Zaid bowed his head. 
He tried his best to fight tears. I have a family, but I don't know where they are. I was traveling with my mom to visit some relatives, but our tent got attacked. They took me as a prisoner. She brushed his back soothingly. Well, I hope you find them one day. Thank you, you're very kind. I hope you get married again. Hundreds of miles away, Haditha, the father of Zaid, looked over the horizon of the desert. His camel was getting tired. He sighed. Oh, come on, girl. Let's go home. He's not here. He had searched fruitlessly through the desert. He had to admit defeat now. As his camel galloped silently through the sand, Haditha began to recite poetry. I weep for Zaid. Not knowing what became of him. Is he alive? Is he to be expected? Or has death come over him? By God, I ask, yet do not comprehend. Was it the plain or the mountain that brought about your end? I wish that I knew. Will you ever return? In this world, only for your coming back, I yearn. Three years later, Zayd ibn Haritha was 15 years old. Khadija watched him haggle a sail. Sir, these textiles came from Yemen just last week. The price that I'm giving you is more than fair. Boy, I have been trading my entire life. This material could have been made by any Arab Bedouin. No, sir. This came from the winter caravan. I promise you. I don't believe it. Muhammad ibn Abdullah came up behind Zayd, dropped a bag of coral pieces and put a hand on his shoulder. This young man is speaking the truth, he said. Then swear by Allah wal Uzza. Muhammad's face darkened. I will not swear by those, he said. Why not? Aren't they the gods of this town? We do not worship Allah and Uzza. In this house, we only worship Allah. Muhammad and Zayd beamed at each other. I'm still not convinced. How about this? You buy a bow's length and you walk around the market. You can compare it to more original fabrics and come back if you don't like it. We'll return it for you. If you change your mind, you can buy more. Khadija smiled from behind the curtain of her window. The young boy had really grown as a skilled salesman. She touched the necklace that dangled over her chest. Muhammad had given it to her when they married earlier that week. She never expected to marry again. Many people had proposed to her, but she declined them all. But when she first met Muhammad, Khadija knew he was different. The door swung open. Zayd and Muhammad came in, <laughs> laughing joyfully. Did he agree to buy? The whole thing! He said he was impressed with our salesman's honor. Wonderful job, Zayd. We are so proud of you. Muhammad ruffled Zayd's curly hair. I'm gonna go help him load his caravan. Muhammad sat on the floor cushion. His face seemed to illuminate the room with its radiance. Khadija put her hands on his broad shoulders. The necklace dangled from her neck. Muhammad, do you love Zayd? I do he said in a soft whisper. One thing she learned about him was that he was purely honest about these types of questions. Then he is yours, my gift to you. The necklace had been his gift to her. She couldn't think of anything Muhammad loved like Zayd, so he was her gift to him. Over the next few years, Zayd and Muhammad became inseparable. Zayd was not treated like other slaves in Mecca. He slept in the same home as Muhammad. They would eat the same food together, as a family. <laughs> Muhammad would always split his food with him. Mmm, this is good. Oh, thank you, Muhammad. Here, have some milk. They would go on trips yeah. and journeys together. Ha, huh, you can't beat me, Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> they worked in Khadija's shop, side by side. Wonderful job, Zaid. Muhammad, help me out. When Muhammad had his first son, Zaid was one of the first people to hold him. By Allah, he's so precious. What are you going to name him, Muhammad? I shall name him Al Qasim, Muhammad responded. So now you have a kunya. You are Abu Qasim. Zaid was by Muhammad's side for the good times. Whoa! <laughs> I shall okay. splash you back. Come on, Qasim, help me splash your father. And he was there by Muhammad's <laughs> side for the bad times. Sorry, Muhammad. I'm so sorry. You shall have more kids. By Allah, I know you will. Come with me. 
I'll help you bury him. He led Muhammad by the hand as tears streamed down his cheeks. Zayd was just as grieved for the death of Qasim as his master was. As Zayd grew older, Muhammad taught him everything he knew. How to hunt, how to trade, and how to be a friend. You're a good teacher, Muhammad. Whenever Muhammad was invited somewhere, he would bring Zayd along. Thanks for inviting me. And Muhammad would insist that Zayd sat with the guests, and not outside where slaves were usually left. Zayd had never met a man like Muhammad. He was always smiling, always caring, always deeply concerned for others. He never hit Zayd or gave him too much work, never yelled at him or mistreated him. I'm, I'm sure I'll find some work in the future, Zayd, but right now money is really tight. Your master cares a lot about you, so maybe if you ask him, he can help me out? My master? Yes, you know, Abu Qasim, your master? Oh, you mean Muhammad. Yes, I'm sure he'd be more than happy to help. He's probably at the cabin right now. I'll find him. As Zayd went to find Muhammad, he was welcomed and greeted by others from the Banu Hashim clan. Muhammad's love of Zayd was contagious such that the entire clan treated Zayd as one of their own. Zayd was distracted enough that he did not notice someone watching him from across the Kaaba courtyard. Watching him and recognizing him. It's him, Haritha. I am sure of it. I spoke to some of the clansmen and they said his name was Zayd. He looks just like you. I spoke to some of the other travelers and had them speak to him. He said he lives with a very noble family. Apparently, he is owned by the grandson of Abdul Muttalib, a very honorable man, very generous and kind. Muhammad? Yes, that's the one. My son! After all this time, he's been in Mecca? Muhammad is an honorable man. If we pay for him, we can set your son free, Haritha. Haritha closed his eyes. So many years had passed since his son was kidnapped. All he had to do was go to Mecca. We ride tomorrow morning. One way or another, I am getting my son back. Noon time was a peaceful time in Mecca. Muhammad had his back to the Kaaba. He had his eyes closed and was enjoying the warmth of the sun. Two men in traveling cloaks approached him. Muhammad opened his eyes. Greetings, honest one. My name is Haritha. This is my brother. Muhammad greeted them warmly and invited them to speak. Muhammad, you are from the Banu Hashim clan. The people of the sanctuary... You are known for your generosity, your care of orphans, and taking upon yourself the needs of others. My son, Zaid, was kidnapped years ago and taken as a slave. And I am willing to give you what you want for him. Ask your price, and I will pay for his freedom. Honor us with your generosity. Muhammad smiled. I have no need for your ransom. Why do we not let Zaid decide his fate? If he wishes to return with his family, then I will release him with no ransom or price in exchange. The two men were positively ecstatic. You have been most generous and kind. You have done more than we could have possibly asked. Zaid was called for. He arrived at the Kaaba not long after. As he walked inside the courtyard, he had eyes only for Muhammad. Haritha watched his son with his mouth open. His brother coughed loudly, <coughs> hoping to break Zayd's gaze away. Muhammad put a hand on Zayd's shoulder. Do you recognize these two? He said. Zayd looked at his father and uncle. His eyes widened with comprehension. Yes, I do. This is my father and my uncle. The two men beamed at him. Haritha made a motion as if about to hug, but ended up scratching his beard instead. Muhammad continued. They have come to take you back to your family. Haritha was surprised at the look of shock on Zayd's face as he spun around to look at Muhammad. What did you tell them? I have left the matter to you, Zayd, Muhammad said. Oh, in that case, I would never choose anyone else over you. Haritha and his brother looked as though cold water had been splashed over them. Oh, my son, do you not understand what this man is offering you? No, I understand perfectly. Haritha blinked several times very quickly. 
Oh, my son, are you choosing slavery over freedom? A stranger over your own family? I am. But why? I have seen something in this man that I have never seen in anyone else. And I am not the kind of person who would ever choose anyone in preference over him. Muhammad smiled widely at Zayd. It was a beautiful sight to see. Haritha, on the other hand, looked devastated. But how, how can I... How can... My son is not a slave. If you love your master, that's all well and good, but you are a free man, not a slave. I want you to be part of a tribe, to have inheritance, to have nobility. Muhammad nodded in understanding. He took Zayd's hand and led him to the Hijr of the Kaaba, where all public announcements were made. They stood on the stone step. O people of Mecca, Muhammad shouted. A small crowd of people gathered around with interest. Haditha looked up in curiosity. I call everyone to testify that henceforth Zayd is from me and I am from Zayd. Zayd is my son. He shall inherit from me and I shall inherit from him. From this moment on, Zayd is free. Zayd was overcome with joy. He turned to Muhammad his new father, and embraced him. Zayd's blood father and uncle were smiling in spite of themselves. Haritha had his hand over his forehead in disbelief. Zayd descended from the hijjah. Haritha stood face to face with Zayd. You're free. You're from the Quraysh now. You are from the most noble tribe, the most noble clan. He looked at Muhammad as well. And from the best family. My son is now the son of Muhammad from the Banu Hashim clan. He looked very seriously at Zayd. You are happy with this man? Very. As long as you are happy, then I am. On that day, Zayd ibn Haritha became Zayd ibn Muhammad. A slave became a son. Zayd's childhood had been one of acceptance, gentleness, and love. Because Muhammad was his father. He always had been. The day he was adopted was merely the day the undeniable was declared. Years later, Zayd was no longer the little slave boy that served at the house of Lady Khadija. There was another boy there now. Zayd waited outside the door. Ali ibn Abi Talib, the young cousin of Muhammad, exited the house with high spirits. Zayd grabbed Ali and covered his mouth. Ironically, that was how he himself had been kidnapped nearly two decades ago. Shh, easy little man. It's only me. Zay, don't do that. Shh, quiet, Ali. What are you... Woe to you. Is father in there? Is he? No, he left. All right, be calm, be calm. Zay, what is this? What do you want? All right, listen, Ali. I know you know something I do not. Muhammad has been acting strangely for weeks now. He was going to hit off for a bit, but then he stopped. And now he and Lady Khadija are up to something. I know it. All right, yes, there's something going on, but it's a secret. I just want to know if he is all right. I care about him just as much as you do. Ali would not meet Zayd's gaze. He rubbed his shoes against the pebble. He wasn't sure what to do. Zayd, do you believe in the idols? Zayd was taken aback by that. No, of course not. Muhammad raised us better than to worship wood and stone. Ali gasped. Zayd spun around to see his adoptive father standing there. The Rasul, peace be upon him, beckoned Zayd inside. Zayd followed. They sat together. Zayd listened to his father's story. Zayd realized that if anyone in the world had sat down with him to tell him about angels and words from God, he most probably would not have believed him. But it all made sense now. All those years under his household, where Zayd was so enthralled and captivated by his character, that he would choose this man over his actual family. The perfect explanation of why Zayd loved being a slave to the man in front of him, and why the best day of his life was the day he could call that man father. No person could have such a perfect character, not unless that person was Allah's chosen prophet. Which is why when the Rasul concluded his story, Zayd simply said, I believe you. You're listening to The Sound of Sira, brought to you by Islam by Touch.